Here you will learn how to use a gasifier to convert carbon after tire pyrolysis, technical carbon, into useful clean gas. I will tell you about three ways to do this in an environmentally friendly manner. In 2017, 2.7 billion tires were produced worldwide, but only 1 billion were disposed of. Disposing also refers to dumping in landfills, but this is now banned in many countries, even in South Africa. Tires have more caloric value than coal and is an excellent fuel. From my experience, I've had a lot of calls in 10 years asking how to turn tire carbon into gas. Tire carbon is a harmful and useless fuel with low reactivity, spewing out under refined heating oil after semi-coking and acrid, smelly smoke when burned. Sulfur residue, which makes about 2.6% of tire carbon, is extremely stinky, and it's not just the sulfur that stinks. Those who make heating oil from tires, sell it successfully, but tire carbon cannot be sold and accumulates in large volumes. Only a gasifier can cope with this carbon in an environmentally friendly manner. I accomplished a 10 megawatt electricity project couple of years ago in Georgia. 10 Gen Botcher engines generated electricity from tire carbon after semi-coking. The station included desulfurization filters. This is one of the countries where there is nothing to burn to get power. The same is true in Moldova, where you can't buy marketable wood chips because they are in short supply. I was in Moldova. You can't find wood fuel there, it's in short supply. Recently, I had a conversation with a man who wanted to install two 500 kilowatts gas piston generators to generate electricity in Moldova by gasifying tire carbon. Heating oil from tires had already been extracted and sold. The only thing left was carbon, which no one wanted to take. This conversation is what prompted me to make this video. Heating oil obtained from tire pyrolysis at 550 degrees is a complex mixture of organic compounds from C5 to C24. This fuel has a large share of aromatic compounds. Heating oil is, in fact, mineral oil. Its calorific value is 10,200 kilocalories almost the same as that of gasoline. Heating oil contains 0.4% of nitrogen and 0.6% of sulfur. When tires are semi-coked, synthesis gas is released. Its calorific value is 9,500 kilocalories. For comparison, the calorific value of natural gas is 7,600 kilocalories. A liter of gasoline has 7,800 kilocalories. The chemical composition of tires is as follows, 65.7% volatile matter, 26.8% bound carbon, 6.6% ash, 81% carbon, 7% hydrogen, 2.4% oxygen, 0.3% nitrogen, and 1.8% sulfur. After pyrolysis, the percentage of sulfur in the carbon residue increases to about 2.6%. The ash, in terms of dry weight, can reach up to 15% according to different studies. Different authors made chemical analyses of tires and obtained different data which can be seen in Table 2. Turning tires or tire carbon into pure gas is a good solution for countries with no or expensive wood chips, especially since 1 kilogram of such carbon equals 2.3 kilograms of wood in terms of caloric value. Another advantage is the possibility to replace part of the fuel with water. According to studies, the top value for charcoal is 40%. For tire coal, the top value can be increased to about 60%. I have seen works where the marginal share comprised 66%. At my institute, I used a small prototype to study how much water should be added to carbon after tire pyrolysis. When water is added, the flame becomes much hotter due to the transformation of water into hydrogen. The video shows how I did this. I didn't have a lab with expensive equipment, so I conducted my experiments quick and dirty to see what would happen. It turned out well. Steam reduces the consumption of carbon and makes the gas more caloric. For example, blowing steam into a transverse charcoal gasifier increased the gas calorific value by 10 to 15 percent due to the reduction of nitrogen in the gas and the increase of hydrogen. Here is the same mechanism. The calorific value of carbon after tire pyrolysis is 8,100 kilocalories, which gives 3,500 kilocalories. The ignition temperature is 459 degrees. Carbon has similar parameters to semi-anthracite. By the way, Europe has now banned the disposal of tires, apparently. By disposal we mean burying them in the ground in landfills. Although I'm not sure, Europeans even pay those who take tires. The latest price is 200 euros per ton. If we make a good gas generator to properly turn them into gas in an environmentally friendly way, 
we will get a source of high calorie free fuel. While drafting the script for this video, I studied around a hundred scientific articles on tire gasification. It took me three days to draft a three pages long abstract for this video. So, here are three methods to gasify tires and carbon. The first method is the most common in Europe. First, a tire should be crushed into a fine powder, then gasified in a fluidized bed gasifier with or without steam added. What did the experiments show? Steam of different temperatures, 100 degree, 190 degree, and 230 degree, was blown into a fluidized bed gasifier in addition to crushed tires powder not to be confused with technical carbon after tire pyrolysis. At the steam temperature of 100 degrees, the gas caloric value was 351 kilocalories. At a steam temperature of 190 degrees, the gas caloric value was 1306 kilocalories. At a steam temperature of 230 degrees, the gas caloric value was 1,753 kilocalories. Look at figure 6 in the middle column of table 7. We see that for 1 kilogram of air, 237 grams of steam was blown in. The caloric value of the gas was 7.34 mj, or 1,753 kilocalories. We can also see gas composition. Let me remind you that it was not tire carbon but shredded tires. The Chinese obtained slightly different data in a similar experiment. See Table 8, second column. The second method is the most realistic and convenient in my opinion. It is about adding tire carbon to the usual downdraft biomass gasifier. In this case, the fuel can be humid, not wet. Let's not forget that fuels with 50% humidity cannot burn. In the Soviet Union, when wood lumps for wood-fueled cars were damp, up to 30% of charcoal was added to the wet fuel by weight so that the total moisture would not exceed 20%. This compensated for the moisture, raising the temperature in the firebox. Here is the same principle. The wood itself acts like a catalyst to activate the gasification of technical carbon. I have read a series of articles about this, the process goes better. The gas is slightly more caloric than from an ordinary downdraft gasifier. Here the moisture from the wood is already the steam that enriches the gas, so, there is no need to blow steam into the reactor. Therefore, there is no need to make heat exchangers, and the gas can be fed to a burner as is. The third method is for countries with scarce wood waste. It is about gasifying only technical carbon after semi-coking tires. Those who go this way should understand that the gas will be the same as from wood loaded in a downdraft biomass gasifier and even a little weaker if no steam is added to the coal. The reactivity of tire coal is higher than that of conventional hard coal, but worse than that of wood, which means that water will decompose to hydrogen on it faster than on coal. This will require a thinner layer of fuel. For example, the hard coal's redox zone must be four or five times larger than that of charcoal to decompose water to hydrogen. When gasifying with air alone, scientists were able to extract 3.7 cubic meters of gas with a low caloric value of 1,433 kilocalories from 1 kilogram of technical tire carbon. Apparently, the caloric value was reduced by the under-extracted heating oil from the carbon. Those scientists who added steam to semi-coke from tires obtained a gas with a caloric value of 1,753 kilocalories. This method has some limitations. First, the tire carbon itself contains about 12 to 15% of ash consisting of zinc oxide and silicon. The high ash content of fuel leads to lower reactivity of carbon, as well as great slagging. It is remedied by steam. The ideal figure for tires, not carbon, is 230 degrees. The great temperature should be maintained around 1000 to 1050 degrees, which is optimal for the destruction of ash. It's free pouring out of the grates, and a greater yield of caloric gas methane in our case. Another difficulty is that technical carbon is not single-sized. One bag of technical carbon lumps contains two to three bags of dust, and as we know, all layer gasifiers, and not only them, require a single size of lumps. The dust will just clog all the canals. This means that technical carbon should be briquette. It can be briquette with sawdust and even biosludge. This would affect the process positively, but it is still an additional action and increases fuel cost. Of course, the dust can be gasified in a cyclone gasifier, which I described in other videos, but then it would need to be crushed into pieces no larger than one millimeter, and a system to vaporize dust and steam when fed into the cyclone should be designed. Another difficulty is that technical carbon can be gasified only with steam. 
Why? Because pure carbon will increase the temperature to 1,600 degrees and melt the grates. Steam is mandatory, which means that a heat exchanger for steam heating is also mandatory. If you need a project, my WhatsApp is under the video. See you soon.